Welcome to another episode of Tiffin Box TV. I speak with photography industry leaders who make it a habit of inspiring others, bridging craft and commerce to help you create a sustainable and creative business. Today's guest is a friend of mine. His name is Andrew Funderberg. He's been on the show before many, many times. He's a visionary behind Fundy Software, something you probably should be using for your business. Uh, and it's a, it's a really a, a, a great number of apps in one. He'll tell us a little bit about it, I'm sure. But he'll be also teaching at Inspire Photo Retreats in February 2017. And I am truly, truly excited to see him back on the East Coast. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much. So great to be here. Dude, you know, I, I love what you do. I've always loved what you've done in the, in the past. And I've always been very supportive of what you, you do for other photographers. The thing that I love about Fundy Software, it empowers photographers from the get-go. There's no, like, two things about it. It's like you use it, you are empowered to, to first serve your clients and serve yourself, which is very important these days. So tell us a little bit about your, your presence at Inspire coming up in February. I know it's a few months away, but I would love to know what you're going to be bringing us and what are you going to be teaching us? Exactly. So uh, I'm, I'm going to be teaching very much as a, a fellow photographer and a person in the industry, um, not as you know, necessarily a representative of our, of our company. How I manifest my beliefs in the power of print and storytelling is by creating software that allows photographers to, to do that better. But the core fundamental of my beliefs are that uh, there, you know, there is someone in the future that's probably not born yet that needs the photos that you're taking now in print. Right? Okay. And yeah. right? So if we don't get those images in print, then let me just switch my light back on. If we don't get those images in print, then there's going to be a grandchild somewhere that is not going to be able to look at their great grandparents or their grandparents' wedding photos or family portraits, right? So we need to have those photos in print. So what I'm going to be speaking out is, is basically three pillars. The first pillar is being able to speak about the importance of print from a, a place of authenticity um, and to tap into your client's emotion so that they want uh, those prints. And we all know that when we as photographers see our prints on the wall of our clients or on the coffee table in our client's home, we feel more fulfilled as artists. Right? We're business people, yep. but we're crazy emotional business people, and we need, <laughs> we so need that, that artistic validation uh, behind our business. Yes. Uh, the, the, the second part is uh, we're going to talk about how to shoot from a place of storytelling for our clients, to tell our clients' stories, uh, bring in a lot of cinematic techniques um, and understanding of, of how cinema is shot, uh, how uh, partnering with uh, the guys over at Still Motion Media on documentary filming and how to discover story and retell story. And then the last part is just the nuts and bolts of running sales sessions to sell more albums, to sell more wall art, whether you're doing portraits or, uh, or weddings, it doesn't really matter, right? So if you can follow these three pillars all the way through, you don't have to be a salesperson. You're, you, you get to be a presenter of, of your client's stories, and um, it's, it's transformative in your business to the bottom line. Um, once you make this uh, step, we've been, you know, I've been talking with, uh, you know, Steve Saparito, mm -hmm. right? Steve Saparito, I've been working with just a ton of people to really hone in and refine and be able to uh, be that profitable artist that we all want to be. Sounds great. Uh, I know I, I love the idea that you're looking so far in advance into the future and thinking of grandkids and being able to look at prints. I know you came across a recent photograph of your great grandfather. Is that right? Uh, uh, actually, my great great uncle. Great great uncle. Wow. Yeah. So um, the prints a uh, hundred years old from World War One. And I, I, I remember you showing it to us. Uh, yeah. And, and you know, there's even though there was no physical connection to him, uh, obviously, between you and him, it certainly meant or it still means so much to you. Uh, it's a family heirloom. Um, you know, what you're doing right now is, is remarkable because 
there obviously there is the need to have something tangible at home that you know whether it's kids looking at these photographs or even adults looking at them and reliving those moments that they have they've experienced uh th there's certain there's there's a certain takeaway from having those emotional connections constantly being recharged again and again and again talk to us a little bit about why that's so important so uh, one thing that uh, I've been able to do is be able to take a step back and look at the science behind print versus digital and uh, while we focus on imagery the same thing is true for the printed book versus the digital book uh, printed textbooks versus digital textbooks you know things like well, I mean you have kids right there's this big push towards digital textbooks digital textbooks are crap we studies <laughs> studies show that uh, students retain 40% more information from paper than they do digital. Wonderful. All else, wow. they, everything else being equal, right? So you're basically moving from an A plus to like an F, right? D minus, right? That's 40%, <laughs> right? <laughs> right? So, uh, but there's a lot of uh, things that happen. They've done studies with people looking at uh, printed imagery versus digital imagery. And, and when uh, they do MRIs and they look at how our brains light up um, and uh, looking at print versus digital, when people hold a print and look at the print, the parts of their brain uh, that process memory lights up much, much more. Uh, the part of the brains that, pr that process value and desire. So, so there's something hum part of being a human that when we hold a printed object, in a studio, when I'm meeting my photographer, that that print is more valuable than the digital version of a similar image that I saw on an iPad in someone else's studio, right? Uh, and then when we're selling, when we're selling printed work in, in our studio, if if everything the client has seen has only been digital images, that desire isn't there. People gain desire from physically touching, right? It's like when you go when you go to the Lexus dealership. What's the first thing they want you to do? I get in the car and drive it. Get in the car, right? You got to feel and touch it, and that's what creates that desire. And it's the same, you know, wherever you go, you go to a clothing store. They want you to try the clothes on. They want you, they want you to touch and feel because touch and feel is, uh, I think, actually a lot stronger sense than than visual, right? So. Photography is visual, but if we're touching and feeling, yep. as many senses as we can add to that experience, the better. Let me throw you a curveball. Um, yeah. I receive, uh, out of, let's say, 10 family sessions, mm -hmm. I would say eight would willingly come in for a in-person sales session where they yeah. can experience mm -hmm. these products mm -hmm. in person. Yeah. But mm -hmm. there's always that 20% that says, don't have the time just put mm -hmm. it up online where i can take a look at it yep. and i'll i'll make an i'll place an order yeah so do they they don't obviously they don't <laughs> they, they they stall and yep. they usually yep. they usually find other excuses to not having uh, you know had the time to go and check out these uh things online so the question is how do we as photographers collectively come up with uh a very easy to understand but non-threatening way to message our clients to say this is really something that you should be doing for yourself this is a benefit for you uh, mm -hmm. you know in terms of providing you the service of coming in and talking to us and giving you suggestions on what to wear or what to print and where to display things and all of the stuff that Steve talks a lot about yeah. um, it's making that jump into making it possible for our clients to better understand. That's where I'm, I feel like I'm personally stuck because mm. most often I'm, I'm okay. I'm like, to inspire. yeah, I know, I'm right? I talk. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Yeah. So, but th the long answer, obviously, yes. you know, we hope that you guys all come out to inspire. Absolutely. You know, please come. Um, and, uh, you know, I'll, I'll give you some short answers here in a little bit, but it's, you know, it, it's not super easy. Right? It takes a lot of work. It takes a lot of practice. It takes, it, it, it takes a be, becoming uh, a better communicator, um, being able to tap into your client's stories. Um, it takes having a better understander, understanding of the psychology behind mm -hmm. our, our clients. That's right. Um, so it takes a lot of hard work. That, that said, it's, not, uh, it's, it's something that anybody can do. 
right? You don't have to be a born salesman or, or be this type of person or that type of person. Uh, but ultimately, what it takes is uh, the client has to be sold on having prints uh, on their wall or in an album on the coffee table before you ever pick up your camera. If you haven't uh, done that groundwork before you pick up your camera, uh, you can't do it after. Got it. So okay. uh, it, it takes uh, being old school, picking up the phone and talking to your clients all the time. Okay. Uh, and it means uh, picking up the phone and talking to both the wife and the husband, the mom and the dad before the shoot. Uh, you you got to talk to both because uh, they're both stakeholders in, in spending the money. Uh, and then it taught, then it, it also uh, requires uh, doing a sales process. You know, as you're talking to people, um, making sure that they understand that you are a business that provides printed product, right? You're not a, you're not a photographer that, that provides digital imagery for Facebook. That's not your business, right? And so part of that process is saying, you know, hey, when I'm photographing you, you know, what are, what are some of the places in your home uh, where you uh, would like to have these images displayed? You know, is, are these going to be for your living room? Are these going to be for your hallway? Are these going to be for the stairs? Right, and then you become a consultant in, in how you're going to shoot that, and you can talk about that. Awesome. You know, you you know you can talk about uh, hey, you know, your kids are five and six right now, right? So we want to capture this really special time, right? They're never going to be five and six again. So when they're adults and they're showing their spouses this album of from this photo shoot, what what do you want them to see in you and your family and your relationships? Awesome, awesome, great, great tips uh, from. Andrew Funderberg, going to hear more about this uh, from Andrew at Inspire, and you've all got to come because it's going to be yep. another incredible conference again. I mean, I've loved going to uh, conferences, but this one is really super special. Uh, I'll have the dates and times and all the way, all the different ways you can register and find out about all the other speakers who are going to be there. Uh, this is going to be special. Thanks again for joining yeah. us today, Andrew. And I really much, appreciate it. How much is Inspire to attend? Uh, that is a great question. It's probably, I think it's like four or five hundred bucks. Yeah, it's it's that, right? really super reasonable. Uh, I I always well that's it's a conversation yeah. for a different day, but yeah. it, so I just, feel like it's incredible just value. A, just yeah. to put a bug in in the ear of everybody, the photographers that I've been uh, just talking casually with, right? I just I just help friends in the industry. I become friends with a lot of photographers that are making the transition mm -hmm. of. Uh, of moving, of, of presenting to their clients in person. And sometimes it's just over Skype, right? And, and the difference in this transition in their business is thousands of dollars per client, right? We're not talking about a couple hundred dollars per client. We're talking about thousands of dollars of difference per client. So take how many clients you shot last year. And if you could add a thousand to two thousand dollars per client That's right. to your gross revenue, and that's minimum. I mean, there's, we've got some people that are just like blowing it out of the water that are, you know, crazy talented. Um, but think about that difference and what's that, what that is going to mean to your bottom line. And that four or $500 to attend inspires nothing. It's a drop in the bucket. Indeed. Thanks. Uh, it's always nice to have that perspective from you, uh, Andrew. I appreciate it. Uh, and I look forward to meeting you again in a couple of months, in a few yeah, months. Yeah, can't wait to see you, man. All right, bud. Take care. Talk to you later. Bye. Bye.